In this video, we'll be going over how to use the Astro Dynamics Interactive Demo Orbit Propagator tool in the browser to hopefully gain an intuitive understanding of the relationships between orbit initial conditions, 3D plots, ground tracks, and position and velocity versus time plots. And anyone can access this tool by simply going to this URL, which I'll leave a link in the description, which is deployed using GitHub pages. All of the source code implemented in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript can all be found in the docs directory of the Astrodynamics with Python repository, along with the readme below here, which will also contain these instructions that we'll go over in this video. You can also use the tool locally on your computer, where if you clone the Astrodynamics with Python repository, sorry for the white screen, and you go into here, you go into the docs directory, go to index.html, it's going to be the exact same thing. To start off, the user can define initial conditions for four different orbits, two of which are a state vector, which is position and velocity, and two with Keplerian orbital elements. And you can also choose from different bodies in the solar system, like Earth right now, the Moon, and for Mars as well, all of which have different default values for the orbits, where this green one was chosen for some interesting ground track properties. You can adjust the amount of periods that should be propagated. So say for the blue orbit, now we want to propagate it for 10 periods. We can add in 10, click propagate orbits and everything will update. And we can also adjust the step size by say, saying for the green orbit, we want the step size to now be 30 seconds instead of 60. And we can see the dots are closer together. So now we can get into some interesting use cases for the tool, starting with the positive grade burns and escape velocity. So this first orbit here is defined by only two values, which is a position in the X, which is starting here on the axis that has a red dot at the end of it. You can see X right here and a velocity in the Y. And this velocity is chosen such that this is a circular orbit and is also equatorial since it is aligned with the X, Y coordinates of these axes, which is the same as the plot here, which is why you see the purple that is only along the equator. And what you can do is adjust this value. So say now we want nine kilometers per second. It's still going to be equatorial but we can see that its eccentricity has increased still bounded by earth we can increase it a little bit more say we go to 10 and it's going to get more eccentric but eventually it's going to start slowing down a bit because of the fact that this period is going to get really large especially compared to the time step that we're doing so if we start getting to say 10.5 like that and propagate it it's going to take a little bit longer because of the fact that it has more plots or more points to plot and it's also going to take up more memory in the stack and you can actually get a stack overflow here if you don't increase the time step because of the fact that the stack has to store all of these values six values for each point in the orbit position and velocity velocity is not being plotted but it's still being stored for the reasons of calculating the velocity plot here so if you get really close to escape velocities i think it's around 10.7 for this one but again you can see how much slower it's running again it's getting really elliptical but say we just want to go past escape velocity so we'll go to 11 the tool then instead of going a lot slower just sets a predetermined amount of time for anything that is hyperbolic because of the fact that periods are not defined for unbounded orbits which are parabolic or hyperbolic so if i remember correctly i think i put the default at 80,000 seconds or something so if if this value here in periods is less than 50, which is an arbitrary number, it's not going to use it. It's just going to use that predefined 80,000 seconds to just propagate forward. But if you want to override that and then see how the velocity as you keep going out farther in time compares to what the, the infinity value should be, you can say, again, any value over 50 is going to be overridden by you. So say you want to do this for 200,000 seconds. And we'll make the time step bigger, just again, not to cause a stack overflow. So say we want to do 200 seconds, propagate the orbit. And now we can see that it's very far away. And if you want to do the V infinity calculation, given that you start out with this position and this velocity magnitude, what the V infinity value should be for this orbit. And again, you can keep propagating for longer time steps and notice that the, the value of the velocity, no matter how far you go, will always be greater than V infinity. You can also experiment to find a relationship between orbital inclination and the maximum and minimum latitude that a satellite will reach over Earth. So to get a bit finer time steps here, or we can even go to 10 just to make it really small for these two orbits and then update. So these two orbits, we don't know the inclination of this one since we just have the state vector as the initial condition. But for this one, we can see the green one that has an inclination of 60 degrees. So if you go down and hover here, and if you try to find a minimum point, we can see that the latitude is the y-coordinate of this 
of this plot. And then we can see that if we get to a minimum, it's around negative 59 point something something. Same for this minimum here, since it's, or, since it's propagated for two periods, which we can actually increase that, let's just say six. So we can see that it's never going to go below the inclination value, negative, so negative 59.999. And then if we go to upper here, it's gonna be, again, the same thing, but positive. And note that this applies to any orbit because the orbital inclination is defined as the angle between the equatorial plane and the orbital plane. So it doesn't matter how weird the ground tracks look. Like in this case for the green orbit, again, the inclination is 60 degrees, but the magnitude or the maximum latitude is going to be 60 degrees and same with the minimum negative 60. The default value for Earth for the red orbit here is to be geostationary, so it has a semi-major axis of 42,164, zero inclination, and zero eccentricity. Here is propagated for one period, and as you can see, the ground track is just a single point right here, and that's why they're called geostationary, because they are stationary with respect to the surface of the Earth, which is itself rotating, so its orbital period is equal to one sidereal day and not one solar day. There's a difference between those two. And if you want to experiment with this, you can actually, again, increase the inclination. So you should be able to guess that the maximum latitude is going to be 30 and the minimum latitude is going to be negative 30. But if you can guess, or if you've seen this before, what the shape is going to be, it might be pretty surprising that it's actually a figure eight. So you can take a little bit of time to kind of figure out why it would be a figure eight with this argument. And let me know in the comments if you have some ideas or if you already know, it's honestly pretty interesting. And then you can also just... Uh, experiment with the inclination so say you want to go 0 0.6 and that figure 8 is then going to be slanted And finally, another example of an interesting Earth orbit is a Molniya orbit, which is the one here in the green, where this ground track should actually loop through like this, cr should create a loop around itself, but uh, because of the aspect ratio of the image, it doesn't do that. But if you go into the astronomics with Python repository and try to plot this, uh, it will do that because those plots are set up correctly. So this has a very interesting property that they're very elliptical, so you can see in the green right here, the very elliptical orbit, and they happen to hover in northern latitudes between two different areas around the world and if you can guess kind of why this orbit would have been useful during the cold war let me know in the comments uh, see where it's hovering over but you can also move this orbit around so say you want zero ran it's going to hover over different parts of the world so you can kind of move this around to see a kind of an interesting one say we do uh, 200 degrees ran just to get it to hover in some place that you're interested in so let me know if you have any questions or comments about this. This is definitely the biggest program I've ever written in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I'm not guaranteeing in any way that the practices I'm using are up to date with modern JavaScript practices or anything like that. It's just something that I kind of just put together since, again, I don't know JavaScript that well. But let me know what you think. And in the next video, I'll be going over all the source code of how I kind of put all this together and kind of how I'm going to improve it over time. Because I will say there's a little bit of technical debt in here, again, because of the fact that I'm not that experienced in JavaScript. I did some things that are probably bad practices that I can improve in the future, but it still works for the way that I intended it to for now. So so yeah, let me know if you have any questions, if you want to look this over and I'll see you in the next video.